Sorry. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> now I can start. As chair of the Fish and Game and Marine Resources Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen uh, contemporaneously to this meeting which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the committee and select staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary participate in this meeting by clicking on the following website address https www.zoom.us backslash j backslash 9305860728383 or dialing one of the following phone numbers 1312626 Six seven nine nine, or one nine two nine two zero five six zero nine nine. Providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meetings using Zoom or telephonically. This information is printed in the House calendar. Providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please call 271-3600 or email at hcs at ledge.state.nh.us. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. I want to introduce the staff that are assisting us. Joel Anderson is the meeting host. Additional staff providing support are Pam Smarling and Brad Greenland. This is a work session on bills referred to the committee for interim study. An executive session will follow. Copies of the interim study bills have been posted on the main page of the general court website under the hearing remote meetings. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required by the right to know law. Um, Representative Dottonville. You have to un unmute yourself. Here. And no one is with me. Thank you. Representative Eisner. Here and no one is with me. Representative Craig. I'm present. Uh, no one is in the room, but uh, my wife and son are at home and it is an open uh, floor plan. So anyone may wander through at any moment. Thank you. Representative Bosman. I'm here and uh, no one is with me. Representative LaFlain. Present and all alone. <laughs> Representative Rubric. I'm here and I'm by myself. Representative Egan. Re Representative Egan. Oh, sorry, I had my phone on mute. I'm here in Sugar Hill and by myself. Representative King. I'm here and I'm by myself. Representative Howard. I'm in my kitchen and I'm surrounded by COVID spirits. <laughs> Re Representative Love. I'm here and alone. And I'm Representative Harvey. I'm in my office and um, I'm alone, but my husband is in the house. Um, with that, I'd like to open the uh, um, session on HB 1585. 
I would like to remind everybody that this is um, a, a bill for interim study. So this is not necessarily a hearing. Um, we've already had a hearing on it, but um, we will discuss the bill and then um, go into an executive session. Our two options are um, no further legislation is necessary at this time or um, Joel, correct me the right uh, uh, recommended for future legislation. Thank you. I was stumbling over the right words. Thank you. Um, recommended for future legislation. So um, with that, HB 1585, I believe was um, Representative Egan's bill. Representative Are Egan. Here? Did you, so okay. would you, I, you was more, I was waiting to. Oh, no, would you just kind of, ref, it's been a while. So just kind of refresh our minds about the bill um, and um, and then I'll open it for discussion and a motion and discussion. Right, um, the bill was to increase the fines on um, poaching and um, littering uh, on behalf of uh, benefit funding for the commission, for the uh, Fishing Game Commission. So to simplify it. And can I have a motion concerning House Bill 1585? I move to uh, deem that bill uh, ought to pass no, we just have two options. No further legislation oh, is necessary. Yeah. I, I withdraw my motion. Okay. So can I have a, a motion, please? Can I can I move? Yes. I didn't know if I was allowed to move my own bill. Um, oh yeah. I move I move that the bill see, seeks further legislation. I'll second. Right, just for clarification, it'd be recommended for future legislation. Yeah, I move that the bill be recommended for future legislation. And, so and I'll second. With that recommendation, does that mean that it's being recommended for future legislation during this term? It would be for the for the the next term. Okay. So. So somebody would have to file a, a file an LSR um, for the next session. Okay. All right. So, and any discussion on that? Pardon me. Who Sorry. seconded? Who was the second, please? Representative Dottenville. Um, it was Representative Dottenville. Representative Dottenville seconded. I do have, Madam Chair, two brief updates. Thank you. So knowing that, um, unfortunately, COVID had sort of stopped any of the discussions that we had talked about post um, the hearing of connecting with different organizations that could participate in looking at how to better assess finding um, over the summer, uh, uh, over the yeah, summer, um, I did have an opportunity to reach out to two local fish and game lieutenants, one that lives in Franconia in my district and is the, the coordinator for District 2 and then the coordinator for my region, District 3. Um, and I talked with both of them from sort of an on the ground point of view that they felt that this was worthwhile. Um, and they both said the same thing, which was, you know, have you reached out to Colonel Jordan? And I said, that was the ultimate goal. If COVID didn't exist, that we would have had a meeting with Colonel Jordan and, and Paul Sanderson to talk about how the state uh, agency could um, give us insight into moving these um, fine increases along. So that's one bit of uh, anecdotal evidence is that the sort of the on the ground fishing game wardens felt that this was worthy 
Um, the second one was I did have a brief conversation in a variety of topics with um, the new head of the Society for Protection of New Hampshire Forest, Jack Savage, um, and told him of this bill. And he said um, he thought that SPINIF would, would support anything that helps fish and game better manage and protect our wildlife and our, our natural surroundings. So it did a little work, but we couldn't do much else. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm checking hands here. Um, I also um, had a meeting with um, the new director for Fish and Game, as well as uh, Commissioner Eric Stoll and Paul Sanderson on a totally different matter, but um, this bill came up and they are also looking forward to working with Representative Egan on future legislation so that it can, uh, the mechanism for, um, for managing this bill uh, could be um, worked on in a better way to actually be of an advantage to New Hampshire Fish and Game. So. I do see a, a hand. Oh, she's taking it down. Okay. Um, so I think what I'm any any other discussion on HB fifteen eighty five. So I think what I'm going to do so that we don't have to go from hearing to executive session. I think I'm going to close the hearing on fifteen eighty five. Open the hearing on HB fourteen thirty three. And then we'll do an executive session for both of those bills at, at the end of, of, of this hearing. So um, Representative Shewitt, I see, is in the attendees. And so I would ask uh, Representative Shewitt if you wanted to just give us a brief um, um, review of the bill, since it was your bill. Representative Shewitt. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, it was my bill. Um, and I, I'm still thinking that we should try and do something on this. Um, it, it deals with, the idea was to deal with the population of ticks in the state. Um, and I had talked to different people from different state agencies uh, that would be concerned with this. Um, um, this bill had a different thrust than most of the bills dealing with ticks. Most of them had to do with dealing with the diseases that ticks cause. My idea was to try and control the proliferation of ticks as a preventative measure. And I had spoken with the various people named in the bill to serve on the commission to try and come up with ways that we could control the population of ticks and still not adversely affect uh, pollinators, for example, bees and so forth, other insects that are useful. Um, I do recall, I believe it was at your executive session that Representative Eisner, I think had uh, a large report that had been put out by Health and Human Services. And I didn't get the chance to ask because you were execing, but I was curious. It seemed to me that from what I learned about that report, it dealt most, mostly with treatment of diseases and the effects of the diseases that ticks cause. And I don't know if she recalls that report, if that's the case or if it did actually deal with methods to control the tick population. May I respond? I, sure. Oh, um, Representative Shewitt, yes. This lengthy report not only addresses the diseases, but it also recommends methods of trying to control the diseases. Um, there's page 22 and 23 there's uh, like seven um, areas that they recommend uh, avoid. I don't wanna read them all uh, just for the sake of time, but it goes into tick zones, wood chip areas, wood pile, tick migration zones, tick safe zone, gardens, play sets. Um, then it even goes into eliminating hosts and host habit can reduce the number of ticks encountered 
mice, other rodents can invade homes. Uh, then it goes physical environment control, municipal and city planning. So it also has recommendations for towns and cities. So um, it does address the, uh, you know, tick infestation, especially with deer. Uh, so um, it is a very detailed report. It's available online. That's where I, I uh, am quoting from. In addition, there, in our local newspaper on August 27th, oh, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you're putting me on. But anyways, there's a headline, prevention guidelines for mosquito and dick, tick diseases. So there's a lot of public information already available. And this newspaper article, it also, so for more information on mosquito born and diseases, visit the DHS website. So there is a website of, uh, available at all times for the public to um, get more educated on um, what to do when, if they're concerned about ticks and mosquitoes. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right, any other questions or discussions? If, if I can just say, um, thank you very much, Representative Iser. I appreciate that. I leave it to the committee if they feel that uh, anything further should be done in this area or not. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Shewitt. We appreciate it. Um, any other discussion? Uh, I'm going to just check hands, make sure that I have, I'm not missing anybody. Oh, um, Representative Howard. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I just like to say, right around, I see a lot of yards that say the yards have been treated for tick and mosquitoes. So uh, there are companies out there already doing this kind of work. Okay. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands. Okay. All right. So. Um, um, I think we can move into executive session for both of these bills. I'm going to close this hearing, move into executive session. Let's start with uh, the one we just uh, were talking about, HB 1433. I need a motion, please. My recommendation is no future legislation is needed at this time. Is there a second? No to that second, motion? that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So the vote is going to be a roll call vote. I'm going to... Um, um, just go across my screen. Um, starting with Representative Dottonville. I, I vote. Are we voting on both or, or just, no, just, just one at a time? So HB 1433, the motion is no further legislation is necessary. I vote yay. Representative Eisner. Yay. Representative Craig. Yes. Representative Bosman. Yes. Representative LaFlame. Yes. Representative Egan. Yes. Representative Rubric. No. Um, Rep Representative King. Representative King. Yes. Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Love. Yes. The chair votes yes. Did I miss anybody? Okay, Representative King, would you please read the vote? It would be 10 yeas, one nay. No further legislation is necessary. Um, I'm going to close the executive session on HB 1433 and go back to um, an executive session on HB 1585. The, re the motion was um, future legislation would be necessary. Any other last minute discussion before I call the roll? Okay. Uh, oh, Representative Dottonville, you're muted. Were you saying something? No. Okay. Uh, Representative Dottonville. Uh, yes. Representative Eisner. Yes. Representative Craig. Yes. Representative Bosman. 
Yes. Representative Harvey, pardon me. I, I didn't know if we had a, a motion. We did. And a yes. And a second. Did we have a motion and a yes. second? Yes. The motion oh, okay. was. I'm sorry. Yes. The motion was that future legislation would be uh, necessary. Okay. I was just worried. I didn't hear there was a second to that. And there was. Representative Dottenville. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So I forget where I was. Representative Laflame. Yes. Representative Egan. Yes. Representative Rubrick. Yes. Um, Representative King. Yes. Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Love. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Representative King, when you're ready, would you please read off the, the vote? That was 11 yeas, unanimous, no nays. Thank you. And so Representative Egan, um, I assume that this is something that you're going to work on? It would be my honor. Okay, and so you know, you're free to form some sort of an ad hoc committee. And um, if you want some help either from this committee or from anybody to help you work on, on uh, future legislation. Just wanted to let you know that you could do that. Or right, so based on the committee, the bill that goes, I have to refile that is what you're, is, Joel, is that what has to happen next? Yes. That's right. That's right. A new bill has to be filed. Right. But, it, but, but talk in between now and that is what you're saying, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, and, and, You'll refile a, a completely new bill. I, I, I don't think you'll file the old bill with amendments or something. You'll refile a, a whole new bill. And you can, um, it, it doesn't have to be, there is a September filing period, which might even be open now, but um, it's been advised to just wait until the November filing period. So um, you, ha you have a couple months to, to think about it. And I think the November filing period starts um, right after the general election, November 8th, around in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Representative Craig. Thank you. For uh, yes, I just want to say that the September uh, period ends tomorrow. Yes. Uh, yes. But you can uh, submit the LSR merely as a, as a placeholder and then work on the legislation in the November filing period. Thank you. I, I think they, though, they will look for some... Um, information along with that filing as to um, they do ask for complete information. I don't know if it has to be complete, complete, but um, so um, it can't just be a, a title, supposedly. One other thing um, while I'm speaking, um, just a reminder, each one of these uh, recommendations for the two bills, each one has to have a statement that goes with it um, that will be printed okay. in the House calendar. So the, the person who made the motion uh, should write up a, a, a statement explaining the committee's rationale for their recommendation. And they should send that to you, Madam Chairman. Um, okay. yeah. So um, Representative Egan, would you please write up a, a little statement about um, um, the recommendation for your bill and uh, Representative Eisner, if you could write, write up a little um, statement uh, for 1433. And where do we forward that to, Madam Chair? To me. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll get it to today or 24 hours. Um, Joel, is there, I mean, I you want it fairly quickly, but it doesn't have to be today, does it? No, I mean, it, it, it the, the deadline is, isn't for a while for committees to report, but it would be a good idea to do as, as soon as possible or, you know, right. a reasonable length of time. So, right. But, but don't stress out about it this afternoon. Um, it's a beautiful day. Go outside. Do it tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I think that pretty much concludes the business for Fish and Game for our session. I do thank everybody for uh, your work. We, are, um, we do uh, appreciate everybody's input. Um, and, and the hard work that you've done. We would like to um, express sadness that Mark uh, won't be joining us next year and we will right. miss
Right. Uh, I think um, when I asked Mark to be our clerk, he very graciously said yes, not realizing what a terrible job it is to be clerk. It's it's the hardest job if you ever have a chance to fill in for a clerk. It's it's just a very, very difficult job. And Mark has done a wonderful job at it, not only during the meetings, but just to make sure that everything was right for um, Heather Goley. Oftentimes he would come back into Concord the, the following day just to make sure that everything was um, uh, clear and, and filed properly and so forth. So every one of our meetings, he had two meetings. So we, we, we definitely appreciate your, um, your willingness to do the work. Yeah. I actually, I won my primary. You oh. I did not record it correctly. I, I got calls from people all over the U.S. that are friends of mine saying, oh, sorry about you losing. Like, I didn't lose. Oh. It's the newswire. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for the, the kind words. Well, yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I um, assumed that you had lost because I did get, read it through the news. I'm not sorry about any of the words that I said about you, though, because those were all true. So Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> you've done a great job. And that's wonderful. We'll look forward to having you back then. So. All right. Any other business I'm before I say I'm something very relieved. completely wrong? Madam Chair, I'm very relieved because having filled in for Mark once or twice, I had a feeling that you were going to try and tap me. So now I, I have a retreat. <laughs> but Mark, I'm still available for you when you are ill or on business. So I'm glad to fill in. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's been a nightmare for me thinking about, oh, my gosh, who, who, what sucker can I get to do this? So. <laughs> All right. Can I have a motion for adjourning? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. 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 We'll, we'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for your work. Bye bye. You too. Okay. Can you Thank stand you by, all. Catherine? Sure. Thank you. Um, meeting's over, right? Yes. Okay. My apologies. I had talked to Mark.